Hey guys, welcome to the Data Tech channel. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In this channel, we talk about the modern data technologies and do hands-on practice with them. This is a video series on Apache Spark. And here we're learning all the concepts of Apache Spark using PySpark, which is a Python library of it. Today, we will be, talk we will be talking about uh, Spark SQL library and the data frame APIs. We'll start with the data frame APIs and eventually we will see how, eventually we will do the Spark SQL too. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. If you if you remember, we already created the cluster in the last video. And if you guys haven't seen the last video, the link is in the description. You can go and check it out. We are using the Google data proc and the, it's already like how to create a cluster and all those things are available in the last video. Okay. Let's go to Google Data Proc and here. Yeah. So first the first thing we need to do is like we need we will start like how to create a data frame, how to load data to it, and then how we going to work with it. So if you remember last time we need like we can click on this upload and upload the data whatever data we want so don't worry about this like the files which we are using in this demo like people json player csv and player attributes these are open sources or like made up files and i'm going to put them in github uh, my github repository and the link for that will be available in the description too so let's first start with the uh, data frames like how we create so if you remember this is like i'm still following the same program structure so so we keep we don't forget the best practices so the first thing is what is it about who's the author the import jobs and <coughs> sorry if you scroll down in the main you will like you will define your spark and then what what's the function number but it's a function name and you pass this back and we're doing the same here so the first thing we want to understand is like how to create a data frame so there are like two ways of uh, create creating a data frame is one is like manually create the data frame or second is like read or load the data from your storage or from some data source so creating a, a manual data frame is very easy. Like you use spark.createDataFrame uh, function and you pass the list of your data frame and that, that's all, that's pretty much. That's how you create a data frame. So here DF is the data frame which consists of all these things. And in the next line, we're just printing what's the type of it and we're trying to show all the elements and the print schema is is I always believe it's like good practice to print a schema of your data frame here we know like a, this is like a we created it, it's a manually but if you're reading it from a CSV or a, let's say from a source or from a, any other kind of file you need to know what's what fields what fields are they what type are they so for that you need print schema so if you look at this but I know about the code like it's as I mentioned it will be available in the github and the github link will be available in the description so this is how you create a manual data frame and if you scroll down and look at the output i've already created this so to uh, to save time in the demo uh, so this is like andy mandy pandy and like andy mandy and sandy this is what uh, our data frame is like if this is the first thing we are printing here is what type of this data frame and you can this is a PySpark SQL data frame and next is we showing like we showing using the show function to display the data and we haven't passed anything so when you don't pass any like this is like no parameters when you pass no parameters uh, it's by default going to show you only 20 records here we seeing all three records because it's less than 20, but in general it will show you only 20 records and uh, uh, we, we will we'll talk about one more parameter which we need to pass so it don't truncate the uh, it don't truncate the 
like the output so this is how you create a data frame the next thing is like how to load a data frame like loading the data frame as i say in this one be using a like a flat files but in general you can connect to data source and load it from there too so here like how we load a data frame so here we going to load the data frame using a csv file and which is we already saw that you can click here and upload it so player csv is the file which we are re reading here and they're like uh, this is their two method this is the first method so it's basically you use park dot read dot csv with the path of the csv file and that's the first method and here you will see we started with the spark dot read dot then you provided the dot option so in csv file we know that we always have a header if you don't have uh, any headings like you can put it to false otherwise like keep it and then you path, pass the path of your csv file uh, so in google data proc like how to find this path so i'll show you how to find this path let me close this <clears throat> so let's go to the data proc So in data proc you will see all the clusters of you so here you click on your cluster oops sorry go back my bad so in the cluster as we discussed in our last video we always have a storage and that's where we loading loading all these csv files and saving our code so click on that if you click on that it will open like this like it will bring to this window then click on notebook and click on jupyter and you will see all the files are here and as i mentioned last time too you can upload it from here and you can upload it from here it's going to the same storage but the point here we're trying to find the location of the file so let's say if you're looking for the player.csv click on that it will open another window and here this is the path of your file you copy this and you paste in your program you paste it in your code basically and here we looking like how to load the data frame how to load a csv file into a data frame using spark.read.csv method so you pass the path and then after that you use the show function to do it and as i mentioned earlier like show if you don't pass any parameters it means like it's going to show you default 20 records and if you don't pass false it's going to truncate your uh, records and the it's going to truncate your fields the table and the last one is the print schema so okay let's look at the uh, output of this This is the top five records and you see that nothing is truncated if uh, we don't use false probably you don't see the full name of this column you don't see anything full like the, the, i won't say anything full but like some of the columns like if they have like let's say they have a comment or something like they have a big uh big record or something that will be truncated and then print schema like to tell the what are the type of uh, data you have like the field name and the, what type this is always as i mentioned it's a good practice okay and the next one is uh next one is this so next method is the spark dot read dot format okay so basically the next method i'll say the first one is spark.read.csv the second method is the load method which is spark.read.load so in this one like e if you look at this like you pa pass e, e, everything is pr pretty same you just have another option where you specify the format of your file it could be csv json or anything and then you pass the path of it so that's the second way of doing it and if you remember like in this one we passed like our option 
that header is equal to true and here we didn't and that's why if you look at the output this look different like this is not considered as a header this is considered as a record so like I, I did it intentionally to show you like the benefit of this option header true but if you don't pass it like your you, you, like your first like your header rule will be considered as a record so you saw there are like two methods of loading the flat files one is the spark.read.csv or like if it's a json so it will be spark.read.json if it's a, a parquet spark.read.parquet and then you need to pass the path and options can vary depending upon the type of file you're reading and the other one is the load like spark.read.format.load where you just specify the format of the file and in the load you pass the path and here is as i mentioned like similar to spark.read.csv there is a json function too where you like people.json like in this case we're reading people.json but basically you can read any file it could be json csv parquet and those kind of things similarly we can like read other files too let's look at the output of this Let's see. So that's a like a made up uh, JSON file where I like just inserted three records with age and name. Okay, so next thing, uh, this is like, it's a good practice when you're reading a file or a data set from somewhere is to infer schema, you need to know about this. So there's like two ways to do it. One is, uh, implicitly like just using this option where like you say infer schema true and it will infer the schema from the source file but as we know data frame is untyped there's a possibility you will get an error but the best uh, so that's why the best practice is always ex explicitly define the schema so if you look at this schema here you need to like use the struct type function and there you mention the each field and what type of it is and also you can add like whether it's nullable or not but here i'm like just the id what type it is it's pretty much like uh, the ddl in um, sql where like you define the field like your field and field type and you're doing the pretty same here and once you have your schema defined, like it's in struct type, it's a function where you define the structure and then you use the struct field to define the individual columns. And after that, it's basically whenever you're reading, either using like spark read.csv or JSON or something, you just need to pass uh, another, so you just need to pass this, like what schema is this? and after that you you'll be good and this is like this is a good practice to explicitly define the schema and we can look at the records now so I explicitly define its integer string integer timestamp double and when like it's taking by itself you can look everything was string string that's a problem like it's untyped or it's implicitly read whatever and in most of the cases you will find like it, it convert everything to the string to avoid any data type issues